I analyze the science behind how Spider-Man's web shooters work, so we can understand just how incredible of an invention these things really are, and what they can really do. Which might sound like a bold topic for someone to cover, but as a trained scientist and someone who loves all things flashy, there just might be something that we can uncover behind these really cool beauties. Spider-Man's twin web shooters, which he wears on his wrists beneath the gauntlets of his costume, were initially created by Peter not for superhero work, but rather to help him become a professional stunt performer like no other. That is, until Peter lost his uncle, realizing that he could have prevented his death, and thus his insane new inventions became his chief weapon in protecting the world. And Spider-Man's web shooters have remained generally the same over the years, being technologically advanced enough to be worth millions, if not way more. With Peter adding upgrades to them over the years, like a light that tells him when he's running low on fluid, a spider tracer launcher, and a voice command function. Given that Peter always seems to be absolutely broke, being a struggling teenager or young adult, going so far as to steal resources and parts from a high school chemistry lab, his web shooters aren't made out of anything phenomenal like Iron Man or Batman would make. Instead, they are mostly made out of basic steel and some plastic parts with a few special components that he got from somewhere, somehow. Specifically, Spider-Man's web shooters are mostly made out of stainless steel that can both house his pressurized web fluid and handle the force that Spider-Man's superhuman strength exerts on them without breaking. And taking a closer look at their structure, we can see that Peter uses a more elastic and resilient steel known as spring steel that connects to the shooter's trigger, cleverly uses a solenoid needle valve that is often used in medical equipment that is an extremely durable, electronically controlled valve that is able to rapidly open and close its small hole in a moment's notice, allowing gases and liquids like web fluid to be precisely forced out of it. But perhaps the most amazing part of Spider-Man's web shooters is the unique spinneret nozzles that he handmade. And these somewhat tiny things contain a small but powerful turbine made out of Teflon that have bearings preventing their wear and tear that are made out of amber and artificial sapphire. And it's these components that are responsible for allowing the pressurized web fluid to flow through through as the turbine pump serves to compress and shear or pull apart the fluid, basically cold drawing or stretching the web fluid without heating it, dramatically increasing the webbing strength by a factor of around four times as the fluid hits air solidifying it. But really what I found to be the most interesting thing about the web shooter's design is the amount of force it takes for someone to fire them. Because a solenoid needle valve that releases the web fluid in the first place is controlled by the trigger that rests on spring steel, Peter ensured that it takes a minimum of 65 pounds of pressure per square inch to be exerted by someone, let alone their two fingers, to activate the switch. And seeing how the average human hand can exert a maximum force of 50 pounds per square inch, it's safe to say that no one is firing one of these things unless they hit it with a really big hammer. Which is also exactly what a kid who snagged one of Spider-Man's web shooters had to do. But thankfully, he couldn't shoot it while wearing the gauntlet, or else he may rip his arm off trying to swing. The switch is also situated high up on Spider-Man's palm to avoid accidental misfirings. And as an additional safety measure to prevent misfires while Spider-Man makes a fist or is carrying objects, the trigger has to receive a rapid double tap from Spider-Man's middle and third fingers in order to shoot. And with this invention, Peter has been able to make literally anything his heart desires out of webbing. Since the webbing is attracted to itself, and the spinnerets happen to have three unique holes that allow him to shoot his webbing as a single strong line, a wider spray, or a thick goop, depending on how much pressure he puts on the trigger, Peter has gone to town making some rather bizarre creations. At times, crafting a web glider, web parachute, a freaking web lasso, skis that let him glide down the Alps, a canoe, web club, a ball, bulletproof shield, web discs that literally let him walk on water like Jesus, and sculpt entire statues of himself if he's given the time. The only major problem with web shooters themselves is Peter getting them past metal detectors, as Peter has had to completely disassemble them and place the various components inside his camera equipment to get them through airport security. Given the additional fact that since his webbing exists as a fluid until it makes contact with the air, instantly hardening it from a liquid to a solid, there should never be any 
clogging or jamming of the web shooter's parts. But this still happens quite a bit to Spider-Man in his early days. In all, Peter's web shooters have been noted as only costing him around $80 to construct. But then we come to the most valuable part of Spider-Man's web shooters by far that should see him rolling in the cash, being the web fluid cartridges themselves that he keeps tucked away in his belt. And after taking a scientific look at Spider-Man's organic webs and even Batman's utterly stupid strength, web fluid is on a whole other level of cool. While Peter's exact formula is still unknown, we do know that his web fluid is likely related to nylon, as when the fluid makes contact with the air, the polymer chains within it knit themselves into a long and flexible fiber with incredible adhesive properties. But the web fluid's quality diminishes rapidly once it's exposed to air. And after just one hour, thanks to certain compounds within the web fluid known as esters that are kind of like acids, the web fluid completely dissolves into a powder. Despite this, when shot, Spider-Man's webbing has a tensile strength of an overwhelming 120 pounds per square millimeter, or 77,419 pounds per square inch. Meaning that this webbing can easily hold together practically anything Spider-Man wants it to. And if he shoots you with it, you may want to wait for it to dissolve instead of trying to rip it off. Or try some other method like the time that Spider-Man got everlasting web fluid stuck to him as underwear. At one point, Peter even tried to sell his web fluid formula, but the company that he proposed to sell his secret formula to that no one has ever been able to recreate just didn't see the use of having a glue that only lasted for one hour. And ever since then, the formula and way that Peter makes his special webbing remains a trade secret. A trade secret that we're totally gonna try to break. Interestingly, the secret of Spider-Man's webbing may lie in the fact that because Peter doesn't have much money, the webbing is actually really cheap. As Peter initially made the webbing from a high school chemistry set, and likely out of materials that a more state-of-the-art laboratory might overlook. As during Peter and MJ's honeymoon, Peter was recruited for a covert mission, but being low on web fluid, Peter snuck into a state-of-the-art lab and used their chemicals to create some more web fluid. But the blend wasn't perfect. With the supposedly higher quality materials, the webbing turned out to be highly acidic, dissolving everything it touched. Even when given access to Empire State University's lab, where Peter gave his formula a much-needed upgrade, he still often finds himself ordering cheap chemicals from stores. This also explains why Spider-Man doesn't just casually bury his enemies under webbing and call it a day. But if we were to find exactly where Peter makes his webbing out of, we come to several possibilities that have been shown over the years. And to really get an idea of what the base formula is, the main takeaway points that we have to look at is that the web fluid is made out of some sort of long chain polymer, with natural polymers being silk, cellulose, and rubber. We know that it starts off in a liquid or gelatinous form, is adhesive, and is strong. Meaning that it may even contain proteins found in actual spider silk, known as spiderines and fibrorines that we went over in another video. That Peter realized how to synthesize, which would absolutely make him beyond rich and famous. I mean, heck, in the Spider-Man cartoon from the 1980s, Spider-Man's web fluid was stated to be primarily rubber-based, explaining how covering himself in it insulated him from a 1 million volt electrical shock. And in fact, in some iterations of Spider-Man, specifically in one issue where police managed to preserve a sample of Spider-Man's webbing before it dissolved, a scientist analyzed the webbing only to discover that it was made out of some exotic plastics, polycarbons, and a soft metal known as rubidium, with the scientists telling police that whoever created this is a scientific genius, and they should begin tracking down chemistry laboratory workers, doctors, and even gifted students to find out who Spider-Man really is. But still, no one may ever be able to replicate the formula, at least within Peter's time. As in Spider-Man the Animated Series in the 1990s, Peter theorized to a young girl that the spider that bit him passed along an instinctive knowledge of how to create this sticky silk. And convenient plot put aside, eventually Peter has used his genius and instinctive knowledge to modify upon his formula to create basically every type of webbing under the sun, including magnetic webbing, flame webbing, ice webbing, 
expanding foam webbing, acid webbing, and webbing that turns into solid concrete for stabilizing buildings. And the cost, the money, that this creation would rake into Peter's piggy bank, especially if he was to improve the webbing to not dissolve like he eventually does, would over the years easily earn him hundreds of millions of dollars in counting. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. According to the Ultimate Guide for Spider-Man, each web fluid cartridge holds about 1,000 yards of webbing and is almost as strong as Batman's leg press. As we go over the science behind how strong Batman really is in this video, see you in the next one.